Hello, in this presentation, we're going to enter a transaction for the recording of loan payments into our bookkeeping problem in Excel, keeping in mind how this same information might be input into accounting software such as QuickBooks. If you would like more information about the QuickBooks Pro, take a look at our comprehensive course in the link below. We're going to look at QuickBooks first and then jump back to Excel and put this information into Excel. We're going to put information related to a loan payment. So the first thing we need to do is break out what that payment contains. What is the arrangements of the loan? When we make the payment, what amount is it that will be applied to principal versus interest? So first, we're actually going to look at the amortization table. This is something that may be given within the loan. The loan may give the amortization table or a loan may just give the terms. And all we really know is the payments and the interest net rate the amount of the loan and the amount of payments, then if we know that we can derive the payment amount as well as the table. And we'll take a look at how to do that. Once we have that information, the amortization table looking something like this, in this case, we're saying we have the loans that's gonna be all the same, kind of a car payment type of loan, or if we're making a loan on a mortgage, we would have the same type of, of concept where the payments remain the same, but the amount allocated to principal and interest differ. If we were to input this information into QuickBooks, we would do something like this. We're going to enter it into the register this time. We could write a check, but we'll take a look at the register and put it directly into a check register. And that will be something looking fairly familiar. So if we scroll down, if we went to QuickBooks and went to banking and used the register, then we look at the checking account register then we can enter this data. Now the register may not look quite as familiar since we only see one transaction, but it's going to be familiar to if we we're going to write a check by hand and put it into our checking account to register. We have the date of the check, which is uh, February 1st, and it's going to go to Chase. The amount is for that amount on the table, the amount of all the payments. But then we had to use the split icon because it's not going to one other account. We can't just reduce, for example, the loan payable because there's an interest portion and a principal portion to this payment. So we got to record both the uh, interest, and this should be, this is insurance, That's a, it should be interest expense of the 300, and then the loan payable would be uh, the difference. So this is one way we could record that first check-in, and in order to do this, we need to know what those two amounts are, uh, which we don't always have the amortization table for, and we can make that, we'll, we'll produce that, and uh, then we need to be able to post that out. If we did that for the second payment, we would have the same thing, the same check. In this case, we wrote a check for it, just to show a separate item to do that. We're writing a check. We have the check amount here, same amount for the check, but, and this should be interest expense, the interest expense portion changed as compared to the loan payable. So we have those three accounts. We're going to see those same items as we enter these two items into our uh, Excel problem. Within Excel, we're first going to look at what we're talking about in terms of the amortization table, and then we'll get back here and put this information in. Note what we have here is a $72,000 loan. We're going to say that that's all one loan, and with the terms of the loan, we'll give the terms of the loan, and we'll give the idea that we got the terms of the loan, but we don't have the amortization table, and we'll produce that to see how it's made, and then that'll give us some idea as to why we have to break up this, this uh, payment in a little bit different way than we might first think uh, when we put in this information. So I'm going to scroll all the way to the right, and we're going to have an amortization table that we will put together. So we're scrolling all the way to the right, and we're scrolling all the way past that to the loan payable. And I'm trying to keep all this on the same tab uh, so that we can, we can move back and forth and use formulas between them. So here we have our, our information. Now, when we take a loan out, uh, they're probably going to give us this information and they might not give us the amortization table, which we can then derive. So we'll produce that now. So we have the loan, which is 72,000. We have the monthly payments, which we're saying are 60 and the rate we're saying is 5%. So if we're going to give this as the type of loan that we make an even payment over 60 months, five years, Every month we make an even payment until the loan is down to zero, but we have to factor in that interest, the rent, in essence, on the money that we are uh, borrowing. Then, one, we're going to make that payment amount. This is something often given in the loan terms, but it's a calculation that we can put together here uh, in Excel. 
common type of calculation that's useful to have and we can use a function to do it. So we'll, we'll function, we'll find the payments based on this information first and then we'll go down and make the amortization table because that's not going to be all the information we need. We need more than the payment. So in order to make the payment, we're going to do a function here and use this information to figure out what a payment would be if we had to make 60 payments at 5% and pay off a $72,000 loan. So we're going to say equals and the formula is PMT payment and we can double click on this item here or just select a brackets shift 9. I'm going to double click on it. And then it gives us our items here. So everything every time it says it gives us a little cheat sheet. We want the rate comma and then the number of payments comma and then the present value. So all we're going to do is pick up that information. The rate is that. Tricky thing however is the rate is going to be over the time period we're talking about. Whenever we have a rate, that 5% means 5% a year. What we really want here though is the rate per month. So what we need to do is take that rate and divide it by 12 months. So that's going to be the most confusing part of these types of formulas to make sure that we get the proper rate for the time period. Most people are not really understanding what rate means and if we were really to tell someone a rate such as a mortgage rate on a house was 5%, we would really be saying it's 5% a year, even though we're making monthly payments. So uh, that terminology can be a little bit confusing. So that is the most confusing part. Then we're gonna say comma, and then it says we need the number of payments in pair. So that's gonna be the payments, that's gonna be, or that's periods, number of periods, uh, payment periods in our case. So we're gonna take 60 of them, and that's gonna be that, so we're gonna say comma, and then we want the uh, present value. That's gonna be the amount at the beginning of the loan, the $72,000 loan. And that's all we need. So we can close it up or just hit enter right now and it'll give us the payment. Now note that it put a negative number there. That's just a function of the formula. If we want it to be positive, we could double click on it and put a negative before the P. And that'll just tell Excel, hey, take whatever you did and flip the sign on it. So that'll make it a positive. Now, if, if you wanted to see that again, here's, the, here's what we did. Here's the formula. You could type it in exactly, uh, negative PMT brackets D4 slash or, or um, divided by 12 comma DT comma DT2. Uh, let me say that again. PMT brackets DT4 divided by 12 comma DT3 comma DT2 and enter. It, there's also a payment field up here that if you wanted to do that with a, a little bit more help uh, in terms of the, of the box that they give you some more kind of hints, you could go to the formulas tab up here and choose this item. So we're in the formula tabs, we're in the function uh, library, and we're going to insert function and then type in that you want pr uh, payment. And it should give you the payment right there and it'll tell you that this is a calculation for the payment. And then if you select that item, it'll give you a, a, a bit more of a formulaic box. It's, in essence, it's really the same thing that we had, uh, but it'll tell you to take the rate here. You can see the formula being built here, and it'll give you more of a description in terms of what they're talking about here. So, for example, it tells you, take the 6% divided by 4 and tries to tell you what we were talking about in terms of the interest rate. So that's going to be that. Closing that out. This is, this is good information because when we write the check, of course, that's what we're going to write the check for. This is often what they give us in the loan terms. What they don't give us is going to be the amount of interest and principal per payment, an amortization table. So we're going to make the amortization table now. We know what the payment is. It's always going to be equal to, I'm in DR9, I'm just going to put equals that number. That's the number of payments or that's the amount of payment. Enter. The interest, I'm going to say, is going to be the principal times 5% divided by 12, though. So remember that uh, we're talking about the interest rate is for a year. So if we take the interest, we're going to say it's the 72,000 in this case, times 5%, 0.05, gives us 3,600, but that's for a year. And we want for one month. So if I divide that by 12, we get 300. So I'm going to do a formula for that. We're going to say this equals this 72,000 times 6%, but then divide that by 12. So it's this times that divided by 12, enter, 
300. Then we're going to say the reduction of principal, if we're paying that and this much is going away, that's just kind of the rent on the money, we're never getting that back, it's not reducing the principal, then the difference between this minus that reduction in principal. So we'll say that this equals this number, the payment, minus the amount that is interest, and enter, that's the reduction in principal. And then the new principal, the amount of the loan then, after this payment, is this amount minus the principal reduction. So we're going to say this equals the 72000 minus the principal reduction. Now we're just going to repeat this process all the way down. So we're going to say the second payment is the same. That never changes. I can, just, I can do that all the way down. This is always going to be equal to that. So I'm just putting an equal sign. So I'm just going to say this and 4 is going to be equal to this payment. And the nice thing about that is that we can copy that down. If I autofill that down... Uh, QuickBooks will just put that same number all the way down. So I'm going to put my cursor on this little icon so it looks like that. Not like that, but like that. And then drag that all the way down. There's going to be 60 payments. We're going to go all the way down to 60 payments way down there. And then it'll all be the same. So that we can just autofill off the bat. The interest is going to change, however. It's always going to be based on the new principle. And that's going to be a changing factor. So we're going to have to say the interest this time will be equal to this number times 5%. And then we have to divide it by 12. And that gives us 296, a little bit lower than this interest because the principal has been reduced. And then the principal reduction is going to be the payment minus this new interest equal to, in DT10, the payment minus this interest enter and therefore the new principal is going to be the prior principal minus the new principal reduction so this will equal this principal minus the principal reduction gives us the new principal has been declined and now we're just has declined in value <laughs> so now we're just going to keep doing this on the way down so we got the new interest the payment is still this the interest then is going to be equal to and we won't do this manually the whole way down. We will autofill it after the next time here. So it's going to be that times the 5% divided by 12. Enter. It's a little bit lower. Then we're going to say the new principal is going to be the payment minus the interest equals the payment minus the interest. Enter. And that means the new principal then is going to be the old principal minus this item. So this equals the old principal minus the principal reduction enter now we're going to do this one more time and we're going to try to think about how can we put this in place so that when we copy it down it does what we want in other words if i was to highlight these three cells and auto fill it down would it do what we want and let's try that i'm going to try that one time and see if it does and then i'll build another row in a way that i think will work so we're going to put our cursor there and just copy it one row down and then just check all the numbers. So the fact that it has a bunch of <laughs> meaning the cells too small is not a good sign. So if we double click on it, uh, it took this number, that looks right, but then it take, instead of taking the percentage, it took the cell underneath it because it tried to move the cell down with the copying of the formula. And that's really the problem. That's gonna be the problem the whole way. This looks about right actually, and this looks about right. So we're gonna try to fix that. I'm gonna delete these. And we're going to try to fix that problem. So we'll do this calculation one more time, keeping in mind that we want to copy this down and see if we can adjust this a little bit so that we can just autofill down. So we're going to say the new payment is going to be this, the prior payment, times that, and that number we want to go down. If I want it to, to copy it down, it should go down to the next cell. I don't need to do anything funny to that. I'm going to multiply it times this cell. This cell, we don't want it to move. When we copy it down, we want it to stay we call that an absolute reference cell. So this cell is not absolute. When I copy it down, it's going to move down. We want it to stay. So what we do is we put dollar signs before. And I'm going to put it before both the DT and the, and the 4. So I put a dollar sign. And it has nothing to do with money. This is just like a, a code for Excel. So dollar sign before the, the DT and dollar sign before the 4. And that'll say, hey, whatever happens, don't move that cell. And don't move it to the side, don't move it down. And then we just need to go to the end of that and divide it by 12. So same formula except we put dollar signs in here. 
and enter, and that's going to be the change we need. Now we're in the reduction of principal, which will equal the payment minus the interest, and enter. And we're going to have the new principal, which will remain, once again, equal to the principal minus the principal reduction, which will give us the new amount here. Now, if we copy this, I'm going to highlight these three cells. I'm going to copy it down and double check. I'm just going to copy it one cell down, double check. If it looks okay, we'll copy it all the way down. So we're just going to drag it down one cell and see if it does. I'm double clicking on the formula. Looks like it did what we want. I'm going to double click on this formula. Looks like it does what we want. Enter. I'm going to double click on this formula. It looks like it does what we want. So I'm just going to check it all. So I'm, now I'm going to copy, I'm going to highlight these three cells. And I'm going to autofill all the way down. And once we get to the bottom, this amount then should be zero. That's how we know that we did it correctly. So we're going to put our cursor here and just autofill all the way down. So we're going all the way down to 60. And once we do that, let go. And this should be zero. So this is going to be an amortization table. This will help us, one, make the payment. I'm just going to scroll back up. We're going to start with this payment. We're going to make that payment. And then it'll also help us to break out the short term and the long term portion of the loan when we do the adjusting process. So now we're just going to write a check. And when we write a check, the amount will be for this. But then we'll have to write the other side to it. Interest expense here, reduction of principal there. So let's go ahead and do that at this time. So we're going to scroll all the way to the right, scrolling all the way back. We're in our journal entry. And we're going to put the date here. The date is going to be 2-1. And we're going to say, is cash affected? We're going to say, yes, the checking account is affected. It's going down. So we're going to do uh, the opposite thing to it, which in this case would be a credit. So we'll copy this item. I'm going to put it not quite, I'm going to put it way down here, two cells down, because there's going to be two things above it, interest and reduction of principal. So we're going to put it way down here in B7 right click and paste one two three i'm going to indent this by going to the home tab alignment and increase the indentation now the other side of it we'll get that we'll pull the numbers in a second but the other side of this is going to be one the uh, loan payable is going to decrease we owe seventy two thousand. that's what we're paying off it's a credit balance we need it to go down because we're paying off the loan that's going to be a good thing for us we do the opposite thing to it therefore which in this case is a debit so i'm going to copy that we're going to copy AJ20, scroll back up, put that in B5, right click and paste 123. Now the other thing that happens, of course, is that we have to pay interest on this. That's going to be an expense. So down here in the expense items, remember it's an order, assets, liability, equity, income, and expense. We have interest expense, and that's going to be a debit, as all expenses are, and it only goes up in the debit direction. Therefore, we will debit interest expense. So we're going to copy AJ20, right click and copy scrolling back up we're going to put that in uh, b6 right click and paste one two three that will be our journal entry now let's go pick up the numbers from our amortization table to do that we're going to freeze the panes so we'll put our cursor on aj1 and then we're going to go to the view tab we're going to go to the windows group freeze panes freeze the panes we're going to scroll all the way to the right. So we're scrolling all the way to the right. I'm just holding down the uh, right arrow until we get all the way to DQ. We're picking up this payment. So I'll go ahead and highlight that now. I'm going to make that. I'm going to color it to green. And we are going to make the payment amount of $1,359. Uh, That's going to be the credit. Credit $1,359. We're going to debit interest $300. So 300 and we're going to have the, I'm sorry, the, the interest is here, 300 and the reduction in the loan is 1059. So 1059. If we add up the debits, we highlight these, they add up to 1359, which is equivalent to the credits. Now I'm going to go all the way back and we'll post this. The quick way to go back is I'm going to put my cursor on this side of the freezed panes and then just hit the right arrow one time. So I'm right here on the D column and I'm just gonna hit the right arrow or two times and then it goes all the way back over. All right, so now we're gonna post this. Here's our journal entry. We're gonna journalize the journal entry starting with the loan payable. There it is on the journal entry. 
loan payable is down here. It's the last orange account on the uh, trial balance. Therefore, it will be the last orange account on the general ledger. So we're going to scroll. It's in order, assets, and then liabilities. And here we are. We're in the last liability. It's what we want. There it is. It's up at the top, actually. We are in the debit section. We're in uh, BG8. So we're in cell BG8, and we want to pick up that 1059. So we're going to select equals, and we're going to post that 1059 and enter. So that brings the balance down to 70941 Scrolling back over to our trial balance, we see that same amount then 70971 out of balance down here by the 1059 until we record the rest of this journal entry. Interest expense, uh, next item. It's going to be way down here. Interest expense is way down here, so it's going to be way over to the right on our general ledger. Scrolling right, we have assets, we have liabilities, we have um, the equity and then the income statement. Here, interest expense we have here on BO22. So BO22, I'm going to scroll over a bit to the right so we can have it right next to each other. So BO22, interest expense. Be careful not to put it into internet expense as I did just a second ago. And I'm going to scroll back up. We have to go and pick up this number, that 300. So we'll have to scroll just a little bit. Or we can make this, a, I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. So we're going to tap down from 120 to 110. And here we are uh, in interest expense. And we need to pick up that 300. So we're in BO22. We're just going to say equals and point to that 300 and enter. There's the 300. Going to bring us back up to 120 by selecting this item. Back up to 120. Scrolling left, we're going to look for that 300 over here on the trial balance. So if we scroll down, there's the 300. That then brought down net income. We have a loss. That's the only thing we have so far, meaning revenue minus expenses, meaning that the debits of expenses are currently winning. Out of balance by the 1359 until we record the check amount. That checking account, first account on the trial balance, therefore first account on the general ledger. We will be here in AN8. We are in AN8 equals point to that 1,359, bringing this balance down from 94,437 down by 1,359 to 9,378. That 9,378 then found here as well on the checking account. We're going to do this same transaction now for the second journal entry just to show uh, the difference in the two transactions in terms of the loan payment and the interest as we record it. In order to do that, we're going to jump to the end of the month. And this is a little bit strange. We're going to be a little bit out of order. When we post this, it's going to be a little bit out of order on the general ledger. So bear with us on this. Um, we just want to record the two transactions at the same time to see the difference. Uh, and so that's what we'll do here. So we're going to say on 228 then, we're going to record the loan payment at the end of the month and be able to compare and contrast them right next to each other, even though note, that we're talking about a whole month apart of loan payment that we're recording at the beginning and the end of the month. Okay, so to do that, we're going to scroll all the way to our loan again. First, let's just, it's going to be these same accounts. I'm going to copy these same. I'm just going to highlight these same accounts, right click and copy and put them right here on B9, right click, paste one, two, three. Same amounts. I'm going to adjust the formats, go into the home tab. Make this one there, and I'm going to highlight these two. Home tab, alignment, increase the indention there. So the structure will be the same, meaning we're going to write a check. We're going to reduce the loan payable and record the interest for the other side. Scrolling all the way over to the amortization table then. We're going to scroll all the way back to the amortization table, just holding down the right arrow until we get to the loan amortization. We are now on the second payment. So here's the second payment. We'll make that. I'm going to right click. I'm just going to make it a different color so we can see it well. There it is. And we're going to say the payment then, same payment amount. It's going to be a credit, reducing the checking account, 1359. Then we're going to debit the loan amount though for 1063. 1063. And the interest is now 296. 296. So there is that. Now we're going to post this. So it looks exactly the same, but notice it's a little bit different. Now we're going to post it here. I'm going to put my cursor right here, and I'm going to click the right arrow to go all the way back again. Note you can also on your keyboard select the home 
and that'll take you to A1. Uh, so you can use that. I'm going to select keyboard just so you can see it. And then I'm going to go to the right, and that'll take us all the way back. All right, so then we will record this out and post this. Note, I just want to point out at this point in time that if you don't have the amortization table, or if this is too confusing and you work with a CPA firm, uh, you could make an arrangement with the CPA firm or whoever does your adjustments at the end of the month or the end of the year and say, hey, I have a loan. I don't understand this amortization stuff. I just want to write a check and put it to one account rather than two accounts and did not have this adjustment that I have to make that changes every time because that's confusing. Then you could just say, hey, I'm just going to put all the other sides to loan payable, meaning I'm going to credit the checking account and the other side, when I write the check, just goes to loan payable and it's going to be for the same amount. And I would like you as my adjusting department to go in there and then fix the amount that should be allocated to interest versus the loan. And that's a, that's a very useful way, functional way to do it. It does, make, it does mean that the loan payments uh, won't be right. The loan payable amount won't be right until it is adjusted at the end of the month. But it's a way to simplify the process for the bookkeeping and then just make a, an adjusting process at the end. So keep that in mind if that's an option for you. But we're going to post this out now, starting with the loan payable. There's the loan payable. We have the loan payable down here. It's the last orange account on the trial balance and therefore last orange account on the general ledger. Scrolling to the, to the right in order to find that last orange account. We see it here in uh, BG. So we're going to be down here in BG uh, 9. And we're going to say equals and point to this 1063, bringing the 70,941 down by 1063 to 69,878. Scrolling back over, I'm going to scroll all the way back over. Scrolling to the left, we see that same amount right there. Then we're going to record the interest. Here's the interest that we're going to record. Here it is on the trial balance. It's the interest expense, not the internet expense. It's going to be in the same order on the general ledger. So we're going to look for those dark blue accounts for the interest expense on the general ledger. Scrolling to the right, we see the uh, interest expense here. If we scroll up just a tad, we can barely see it. There it is. We're in BO23. We're going to say equals that number. BO23 equals point to that 296 that's going to bring the balance up from 300 by 296 to 596 scrolling back to the trial balance we're looking for that 596 scrolling to the left scrolling down we see the 596 there then we're going to record the last piece the checking account reduction of the checking account here's the checking account here we're going to be in the checking account in AN9 and just select equals and point to that 1,359 and enter. Brings this amount down to 91,719. That found here on the trial balance. Now we're just going to see what happens to our financial statements. First look in the financial statements for the new month. We did something to cash. So I'm just going to point that over there. We did something to the loan payable. Let's see what happened to our financials there. We did something to um, interest expense. Let's point that over and see what happens to the financial statements. Scrolling all the way to the right to the financial statements, we're just going to scroll to the right. We see that cash has been adjusted automatically. We see that our assets still equal our liabilities and equity. Our loan payable has been adjusted. Scrolling down to the income statement, we see that the inter interest expense is adjusted here, giving us a loss because we have no revenue yet. This is the first thing that has happened. And of course, this is uh, interest expense for the first and uh, last month. So keep that in mind as well. Uh, we recorded both of them just to see two payments. And then that net loss is in our um, statement of equity. And it's used to get our Indian statement of equity amount, 143,579. That also found on the balance sheet.